What is happening everyone? This is Jim from RC After Dark. Uh, what are we looking at here today? Um, number one, I'm going to be talking like the Micro Machine Man because I'm going to try to get this video done in less than 20 minutes. And I like to over explain things so this is going to be tough. Alright, number one, we are looking at a big distraction there. Um, last time I took this trailer off-road uh, doing a suspension test after readjusting the shocks. Uh, Suspension work works great. Uh, things worked out good on that end. Um, but I had also referenced uh, in a previous video about the 3D printed plastic hitch, and I wasn't too sure on the strength. Uh, moral of the story, I broke the hitch on the way back to the parking lot, um, on the way back to my actual vehicle, um, on flat ground of all things. So it just couldn't hold up to the stress any longer and decided to break. Um, Here's what's left of it. No, no real good way to glue that back together and have it be strong at the same time or stable. Um, so I just have a select amount of parts here um, laying around to try to fix this with. Um, I do have a pinnel hitch that I had bought somewhere down the line, uh, but there's just no good way to hook this onto my TF2. Um, I have like a Marlin crawler's bumper on the back. Um, and uh, there's just really nowhere to hook this up um, anywhere so that and it's kind of uh, cheap and flimsy uh, wasn't too comfortable using it um, not strong enough for what I plan on putting it through um, the other end of the pinnel hitch I could use this on the trailer and uh, rigged up a mount for it on my current hitch uh, just with a you know a nut and a washer or whatever um, but uh, the way it goes onto the trailer, uh, this part's pretty wide. It's actually wider than the trailer itself. Um, I'd have to come up with a custom adapter bracket uh, to adapt this to this, uh, which is totally doable, but um, very limited on how much uh, motion you get out of this as far as uh, trail flex. And, you know, it's weird talking about trail flex, flex with a trailer, but uh, since this trailer spends a lot of time off-road, um, try to get as much uh, trail flex out of it as I can uh, along with uh, trying to prolong the life of the 3D printed plastic. Um, so let's get down to brass tacks here. Uh, these chains are decorational. All right, that's just a distraction. I'm probably not going to run these chains. Although you never know. I might run them. <laughs> All right, so that's out of the way. Um, added some shackles to the back of this boom racing hitch, um, just so I can add chains in the future. And I incorporated some chain mounts onto my new hitch design uh, to accommodate that whole mess. All right, we're moving on. Try to get this to focus, there we go. Uh, here's what I came up with. Um, have some Proline uh, light bar attachment mounts on either side. Um, once again, uh, for chain locations, plus it's giving me a little bit more gap up on top here. Um, these are two RC four-wheel drive uh, leaf spring hangers or shackles or whatever. Uh, this is a Entergy WL Toys combo uh, drive shaft CVD joint or U-joint. And this is what I envisioned for my new hitch. Um, out of all my spare parts that I had to work with, which wasn't much, I had some uh, Proline light bar adapters and uh, different brackets and whatnot, leaf spring perches and what have you. So this is what I came up with. Um, this would be your normal range of motion on this. Uh, this is all connected as one piece, so it spins as one complete unit. A normal trailer hitch uh, is mounted solid. Um, the trailer part, like this, has a little metal tongue on the back here that grabs on the back edge of this ball, uh, locking it in place, keeping it from coming off of the ball, and that is your rotation point. Um, but on this particular design, uh, the whole ball rotates inside the receiver. Um, that being the case, this is held in with a Allen screw, like I said before. Maybe I didn't mention it. Um, you need to leave a decent amount of thread in here 
to get a solid hole on that because that's going to be your new uh, rotation point once again. So um, ultimately, I would have liked to have trimmed it right here uh, so it would to keep this flush with the receiver to make it look as real as possible. Uh, but there's just not that much uh, thread going up into here. Uh, so I cut it basically right where these uh, paint markers are on the edge of this uh, drive shaft is basically where I cut this excess material off. Um, here would be the excess material that was removed. Sorry about that. Um, here's a twin hammers one that's totally intact, so it gives you a little bit of an idea of what the actual size is on it. So to give you an idea of how much material I actually removed off of it. Um, could have used a twin hammers one, a black one, but uh, most trailer hitches are chrome, so uh, that's what I went with with that. Um, and once again, most or actually most balls are on the trailers are chrome, and most hitches are black, so that's kind of why, why I went with the combo. Um, up here on top, um, there is another hole going through the trailer on the tongue, and uh, another hole on this light bar mount. I could have drilled a hole through this uh, leaf spring shackle mount or hanger mount as well, but on the inside here, I ran a long Allen set screw, or I put an Allen set screw in between that connects both of these together. I turned these spring hangers around uh, so that the dimple is facing on the inside, so the dimple is actually sitting inside this little socket. Um, you know, the little socket, screw, screw socket up on top here. And that actually gives it a little breakaway point. Depending on how tight you have the lock nut on the back, um, this gives it a breakaway point if you start over flexing the trailer. Um, that will pivot up and down and uh, hopefully prolong the life of the 3D printed plastic once again. Uh, so this whole part, the reca recap pivots in here. 23 millimeter screw, M3. Uh, don't know what the actual, or don't know what, sorry, not 23 millimeter, but it's an M3 stainless steel screw from a Viterra Twin Hammer screw kit. Not sure on the total length. Do have a washer on the back edge here, custom made rubber washer, um, and then this whole hitch attachment. And that spins in here. I do have Loctite on that screw. It is screwed in tight, uh, but it still has a little bit of wiggle room there, uh, just for trail flex once again. Uh, so that's the total setup there. Um, getting all kinds of flex out of it, really. Uh, let me try to hold this up here. Can lift the entire boat vertical, and still has. Well, if the boat wasn't sitting in the nose of the truck, still has that, you know, wiggle room there. So lots of trail flex that way. A lot of side to side. A uh, lot of side to side angle there. It's actually leaning on the drill over in the corner. But there's a lot of side to side movement. You get that full range of motion um, from that cup. As well as if you were uh, cresting a hill um, or going over top of a steep rock or something, it actually gets quite a bit more than that. Uh, but I don't want to try to don't want to break things here while I'm trying to show you guys by showing off or over accentuating the angles, but it flexes pretty good as you can see. And once again, this little slip joint here in the middle, you can, you know, tighten that down or loosen that up uh, to however tight you want to have that. Um, this cup here, like I said, I can tighten this down, uh, this lock nut on this end, and make that a solid mount. And that would look uh, like a standard hitch receiver or a standard hitch on a trailer. But then you're just limited to that full range of motion, which is quite a bit, once again. Uh, but having a loose like that gives me a lot more... Um, for those off-road uh, ascensions and descensions, rolling over hills and rocks and whatnot. Uh, so that's what I got so far, guys. Um, I'll try to hook this up and dis try to disconnect it and connect it here uh, on camera and uh, give you guys a view at the same time. Uh, this is going to be tricky. Try to do this live so you guys know I'm not BSing you here. Not live, but real time, I guess. Oops. All right. 
hopefully you can see what's going on here. Um, homemade paper clip. This kind of is bad news, but it's once again, this is all spare parts. This is the only thing I had laying around. Try to get at an angle where you guys can see all this. And I don't have a good angle on this because of these little tabs here. But there we go. That's all out. And there's what we're looking at, which looks like a traditional hitch ball on a truck. Except uh, that's our new connecting point is sliding it right through that little hole there. Once again, the hard part is just getting everything lined up and uh, trying to get that uh, paper clip back to the hole. Body mount pin would probably work best if I could uh, get one that was large enough to do the job. So trying to get this angle lined up with this angle is the toughest part. And uh, the closer you get it, the smoother this, get, this operation is. Um, looking at the inside of the cup here, once again, there's a hole on the front. There is a hole on the side, on this side, but nothing on this side. Um, if I could get it to a drill, drill press with some cooling fluid going through it, um, I could probably drill a hole through it, and it would be a little bit easier for hooking things up, going from side to side versus front to back. Um, except this is like impact socket material. Um, I had to drill out the top a little bit to accommodate the screw. Um, it did thread right in, but it, uh, as soon as I hit the thread on the opposite side, it got jammed up in the thread, so I had to drill that out just to clear the threads. And I shattered a drill bit, like shattered it, uh, trying to drill through this. So this is not aluminum, it's like impact socket material. Moving on, let's get this hooked up here, trying to get this done, like I said, in less than 20 minutes. try to give you a view here guys all right get our little pin here um, this is I'm coming at it at a weird angle so this is gonna make things interesting so I'm trying to give you guys a line of sight here I right, try to guesstimate where this uh, ball joint is on here Kind of got it started. I think I have it started. <laughs> My finger is in the way of you guys, but I'm, uh, like I said, trying to get this done in real time so you can actually see. Um, it's not necessarily that simple to get it together. Oh, there we go. Um, that was actually relatively quick, in all, uh, all honesty, um, for getting this together. Um, this can take a couple seconds, probably due to the fact that I'm using a gel-coated paper clip. Um, if I had my choice at this point in time, a non-coated paper clip would be better, um, but a body pin would be ultimately to be the best. So we're at 14 minutes here almost. Um, that's what we got so far, guys. Uh, homemade trailer hitch. Once again, I could tighten this down so it's solid. It would look a little bit more traditional. Uh, but I'm going to lose a lot of off-road flex with that. So that's what I got so far. Um, also used some Proline light bar mounts to make some new uh, tie-down points. And added some more Proline light bar mounts back here um, for future uh, tail light mounts. Uh, one on either side. And there's a little view of the floppy suspension. Floppy, floppy, floppy. So uh, that's what we got going on so far, guys. Uh, Jim from RC After Dark. Um, all the old subscribers, all the new subscribers. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. All the people I converse with, you know. Um, everybody, you know who you are. Um, I'd start naming names, but I would forget people, and then people would get upset. So <laughs> um, everybody, uh, appreciate your views, guys. You all know who you are. Uh, thanks for watching everyone and uh, we'll see you all in the next video.